a Monday. What's up, everybody? Monday morning. Welcome to today's edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I'm your host, Chuck Fulkerson. I hope everybody had a great, great weekend. Uh, enjoyed yourself. Spent some time with families. We're going to do what we do each and every day. We're going to look at our major markets, S&P, NASDAQ, crude oil, and gold. And we're going to take a look and see what are some opportunities in those markets today, as well as our stock of the day. Do me a favor. If you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. So you get the alerts, the updates, all that fun stuff. And make sure that you hit the thumbs up icon. It means a lot. I really appreciate it. Also, if there's a stock you want me to look at in our stock of the day, down below, there's a comment section. Just put that in the comment section. I'd love to hear what you guys want to take a look at. And, uh, and it always gives me some ideas. Uh, you know, Selfishly, it helps to open up my world and opportunities. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the big picture. So starting with the big picture, it is a bit of a snooze fest this morning. Um, and I'm going to pull up, starting with the S&P, we are just above what we found to be a pretty decent hourly area of demand uh, in last night's live trade room. So remember, we, we kick off our week with Sunday night's live trade room, and we didn't really see a lot of great opportunities last night for, uh, for, for trades as we were looking at it, and the market was sitting right about here. And we said, well... On a pullback to this hourly level, I think you get a decent area of opportunity. We did not make it all the way back to that zone. Matter of fact, we came close to it and pulled away. So anybody who's been a regular, uh, a regular member of the site or come to this on a regular basis knows that that, that level is still valid because we didn't touch it, but it's no longer a limit entry. It now must be a confirmation entry based upon the way that we structure our rule sets. Um, the better level, I think, is the 15-minute level down below us. Now, this 15-minute level down below us is a nice level, partially because of our volume profile giving us our high volume node at that exact same area. So we get we get a little bit of what's called tactical reinforcements um, of of this area, and I think that makes that for a decent little entry. Now, by the way, if you're not sure how volume profile works or you want to learn more, go to the website, tradersarmy.com. We actually have a class on Wednesday the 14th. Uh, Wednesday the 14th, we got a class that's going to be titled Tactical Reinforcements that you can uh, take a look at and see if it's something that you're interested in. Okay, uh, NASDAQ in the NQ. So looking here at the NQ, very similar picture. Uh, in that we are sitting below a potential breakout above uh, this high. Uh, this line up here is our all-time high. So we even, even when we break out above here, you have room to roam up to this region in there with that 15-minute area of demand also being right down in here as a, as a decent opportunity. So we have the rally, a little bit of a base, and then a very strong Move away, 13.729 by 13.718. So those were our two areas in the NASDAQ and the S&P. Crude oil continues to be a bit of a snooze fest as it's chopping along sideways. Um, we have two 15-minute areas uh, you know, around the current price. Neither one of them are exceptional levels, but they are inside of the range. Now, we are getting a really nice run up since about 3 a.m. It's moved up uh, you know, almost a dollar and a half. Uh, since about 3 o'clock in the morning central time as, uh, as there's been some sort of a news and catalyst that's driven it up. So you could look theoretically and say, well, if we get a bit of a pullback, there could be an opportunity somewhere in here, but it would have to be a very, very clean pullback for this to make any sense because you are definitely in the middle, right, of the of – the, um, of the range. And anytime you're diddling in the middle of the range, it can definitely get you a fair amount of risk. Uh, and then the last one here is gold. Now, gold, we were looking at, I think that gold from a bigger, bigger picture perspective could be setting up to eventually break out significantly higher. It's just not there yet. And I'm talking bigger picture, like weekly chart. I was just looking at the consolidation and the basing that we have on the weekly chart compared to some other consolidation and basing that we've gotten in the past. And it's, it's been followed by big moves higher. And so uh, that's more of a macro view. And so to, to get there, we'd have to get above 1760. But as far as an intraday opportunity, a small time frame trade, I don't really have a whole lot lined up today. Um, you know, break down below this area here, but I don't have a whole lot lined up for uh, opportunities, which is why I said that today is a bit of a snooze fest, a bit of a snooze fest. So 
Um, since I don't have anything in my major markets, let's go take a look at our stock of the day. So our stock of the day today is Yeti Holdings, Inc. So Yeti, they, they make the nice cups that keep everything cold or they keep everything hot, depending on what you have in them. Um, and, and interestingly enough about this, I got a big old 32 ouncer that I drink out of pretty regularly. I mean, great. Uh, the product is great. I love all that. But here's what I like the most. Uh, and where, where I found this kind of opportunity is going back. We talked a little bit earlier about tactical reinforcements. Um, I was looking at what's called my CCI 100 scan, and we saw that it, it is just broken above the CCI 100 area. And this is, a, this is a, a scan that I really, really enjoy. I like to look into this as a strong opportunity. It's typically a, a, a pretty good scan when price, prices break above that number um, with the right settings for CCI. And so we're sitting in an area where we've got some resistance if we break through that resistance area, you could, I could theoretically see price moving significantly higher. Now, when I go back and look at this on an hourly chart, and the reason I like the hourly chart is because, you know, on an hourly time period, we do have one poke above this $80 mark. But really, we, you know, we, we set out a really nice just kind of basing in here on Friday that I'm pretty sure we can see. Uh, an opportunity to get long on a breakout above this region. So um, in looking at this trade, I think that you could have a breakout above that region. Our implied volatility is fairly, oops, let me go to the daily chart. You can't look at IV on anything with the daily. It is fairly low, um, sitting there at about a 54, which, you know, 54 may is, is low on the range, but it's still a very de fairly decent um, implied volatility, meaning that, Volatility could still fall from here pretty precipitously, or it could rise as we head into earnings. Just because we're in the lower part of our range, part of our range was skewed by coming off of the big, uh, the, the big spike from, from COVID. And so with this one, I think that it's probably best if you're, if you're looking at, at taking this one. You can go long the stock if, if you enjoy the stock itself. Um, when I pull up an options table on Yeti, now, once again, I know I don't normally get into options in the daily market commentary, but I at least want to bring it up. Um, when I, if I pull up, say, the options table, <clears throat> I got to really go out to August, and I have fairly decent spreads, right? Um, my spreads are are fairly tight, so I could do a bull call spread with really, you know, not too too much exposure there. Forty cent said spread, thirty cent spread, thirty cent spread, um, thirty and forty cent spreads are really not going to be too bad on this. I may not have all of the open interest, but it's certainly not bad. And so, you know, bull call spread following our rules makes the most sense with Yeti uh, for a long position. Now, what about a stop loss? Where would, I, where would I place my protective stop? Well, in this case, I think your protective stop somewhere down below this region is probably the best place to be. Um, as I've got those two swing lows in here, I think if you place it a little too tight, I think you place it a little too tight, then you don't give yourself enough room to be right. Um, but I also want to make sure that I can get out if it does go against me. So uh, Yeti Coolers, uh, Yeti, uh, Yeti Holdings, excuse me, is the place where I would look at for today. So that's all I have for today. If you guys have any questions, as always, send me an email, chuck.folkerson at tradersarmy.com. Hope you guys have a great day. See ya. Hey, thanks for joining us. If you like what we do, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. It's the only way the computers know that you're actually alive and really care. And go to tradersarmy.com today to learn a bit more. And if you want to see some of our other videos, click here in the box.